How's it going guys? This is Don from Pronda Tech. Today's video I'm going to show you how to build your own TIG pedal. Uh, this is a project I've been working on for a while and I've been gathering parts and going through a few different concepts. I did a little experimenting with different uh, components and I ended up with a design that I feel is uh, something that anybody can build. I could have machined a bunch of parts on my milling machine and that would have been okay, it would have been a great pedal, but I wanted to build a pedal that uh, anybody who has a TIG welder can build uh, in their own garage. There's nothing um, complex about this. It is a mechanical mechanism, but I will go through all the parts of it and I will put a list of parts in the description of the video so that you can order the exact parts and know exactly what I used uh, to build this. It's not a lot of components inside of a TIG pedal. Um, it looks daunting when you look at it uh, exposed, but the reality is that there's really not that much to it. When I set out to build this pedal, I, I wanted to build a pedal that was better than what was out on the market. So what I did was I took a few different designs of, I have a, I have a custom pedal by uh, Nova, and I've had the SSC pedals, and they're very similar in design. Uh, they're great pedals, um, but I wanted to build a pedal that was uh, even higher quality, even smoother, and had a larger range of travel so that I could get more precise amperage control. That's what I set out to build, and I think I've, uh, I think I've accomplished it. Um, I've tested this pedal on my TIG, and it works great. So I'm confident that if you build a pedal just like this, uh, you'll have the same success. And I just wanted to show people uh, how easy it is uh, to build this. I did make it a little bit fancier than probably the average guy is going to, but you don't need to make it uh, fancy. You just need to make it functional. Uh, I'll show you uh, how the components work and how to build your own pedal. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so before I get started here, I wanted to explain uh, what parts I've collected so far uh, for this project. First thing, I had some 8th inch aluminum in the garage, so I decided that I was going to build this out of aluminum. As you can see, I've done a little bit of work already. I took it over to my buddy's shop and used his brake and bent up the 90 degrees bends on the bottom and the top cover of the pedal. Uh, I'm going to not just leave it a square box, but I'm going to uh, bevel the corners of it at 45 on each end. So you can see on the bottom plate, uh, I've already cut the 45s and I've been starting to uh, get ready for uh, welding the end caps on. I've also cut the uh, pivots so that I can uh, mock up the geometry see where it goes and you can see I've already even worked a little bit on the travel I still have to make some cuts for a leaf on the back end and cut the 45s off so that it'll match the top will match the uh, bottom plate with a 45 on each corner but these are the parts that I'm going to be using. Uh, the potentiometer that is kind of the heart of the uh, TIG pedal. Uh, this is a super high quality one. This is the same one that uh, SSC pedals uses in theirs. This is what regulates the resistance back to the computer and tells it how much amperage to give to the uh, you know, torch on your TIG. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a um, 3D printer uh, geared uh, pulley on here so that when you move the pedal, uh, it'll turn the potentiometer. And what I've got is the uh, belting that they use for 3D printers and CNC uh, servo motors. And that's going to wrap around and I'm going to have a spring activate it uh, on return after you let go of the pedal. And I'll show you a little bit more of that once we get going and uh, show you how the geometry is gonna work. 
I've collected some springs uh, that I believe I'm going to need. This is a belt holder. Um, I'm going to put a, a bearing on the other end of the potentiometer so that it's supported on both ends because there's going to be some torsional load on uh, the potentiometer so I don't want to uh, torque that in any way. Uh, I've got the correct uh, plug. This is a GX16 5 pin which goes to my welder. Uh, that's one of the things you'll have to specify for your welder and figure out which how many pins and what size that yours takes. My other welder, my other TIG takes a GX20 uh, 7 pin so it's very specific which one you're going to use for uh, building this. Most of the TIGs out there use uh, five to seven pins. A lot of times they'll have, like Miller, you'll see it have like, you know, 10 or 12 different pin holes, but they're only actually using uh, five to eight of them on most of them. Most of the, most of the import welders are using seven right now. Uh, mine happens to use five. So that's what I went with here. I've got a gland nut that will uh, protect the cable coming out so that it doesn't get uh, torn out. I've got a micro switch that's gonna activate the pedal uh, for amperage when I turn it on. And everything else uh, I'll have to show later when I get this a little bit further along. I've got some parts coming in here. Uh, and so when I get to that point and I get a little bit further, I'll show you uh, how I'm gonna make this uh, pedal work and the internal workings and the bar that's gonna go inside and all that. Okay, so right now I'm getting ready to solder the leads onto the potentiometer. And so I've got my potentiometer already. I've got it in the mount. That way it's easier to hold. I'm going to tip it up so it will make it easier for me to uh, solder the leads on. And I've got my shrink wrap over here. And these are my three leads. You'll also notice that... Uh, I have two capacitors soldered on and this is an important part that's why I wanted to show it close up here. So what you're going to do is take your two uh, capacitors and I'll have a link in the description of the exact capacitor that you want. You want to put one across uh, from the common to each pole. So you have two capacitors both going to the common in the center and out to the uh, opposite um, end of the potentiometer. So you have one from 0 to 10,000 on this potentiometer and one from 10,000 to 0. And I've pre-soldered the two capacitors onto the leads. That way it'll make it easier for me to solder it onto uh, the potentiometer. What this does, uh, what this uh, capacitor does is it cleans up the signal. It makes the uh, signal when you uh, press the pedal, it keeps from having any sort of voltage surges or um, anything like that in the line so you don't get noise basically to the computer. You want a nice clean signal going to the computer so it knows exactly what resistance value that it's receiving so that it can give a nice clean amperage range as you press your pedal. So that's what the purpose of these capacitors are on the line. All right, so I'm going to set it up and uh, I've got my solder ready and my uh, flux. Got my soldering gun already. So I'm going to set this up and solder these together. Okay, what I've done so far is I've got the top all done. I've got the bevels cut. Uh, I've got it actually, um, the internals are probably three quarters of the way done. 
I'm finishing up getting the geometry, the fine tuning of the switches and the uh, travel of the actual pulley or the cogged gear uh, for the belt for the distance because it has to be fine tuned for the distance, the exact amount of turn of the uh, potentiometer. You want to be able to have 100% use of the full range of your potentiometer. So that takes a little bit of uh, uh, fine tuning, but it's, it's a working uh, model now. I've actually tested it. I've played around, I hardwired it in on uh, without having the, the back end welded on yet. I have it just open. As you can see, you can see the mechanism. You can see it moves just a little bit to activate the switch and then the rest is the potentiometer. And I'll pull the cover off here, the top, so you can see the inside of how it works. Uh, so I've got the pivots all done. I've got bearing housings made for the inside and all of the uh, brackets uh, for the pivot arm and the potentiometer bracket and all that finished. Um, I still have to obviously weld on the front covers and the rear covers. I have them all uh, cut out. The front and the back, I have them all, all cut out and I've got a brush finish on them. Now I just need to get everything uh, tacked up and do some welding and I'll be a lot closer. So now I'll show you, I'll take the cover off here. What I've got is um, 3 8 shoulder bolts for the pivots and I'll show you what I did. They go in and they bottom out. So to make this a super smooth pedal, I wanted this uh, whole top cover to be riding on bearings. Uh, the co the uh, commercial pedals that you can buy, the custom ones that are aftermarket, are uh, they just use a plunger that sticks out and is spring loaded. And it's okay, it works fine, but if I'm gonna build my own pedal, I'm gonna build one that's uh, more precise and smoother. And so that was the reason why I decided to go with 3-8 shoulder bolts and ball bearings for the whole top cover to uh, ride on. That way I have glass smooth uh, all the way around. Same with the potentiometer, I didn't want any drag on that. And so I'll show you after I get the cover off here. So you can see this is a spring that I mounted. All this spring does is keep the cover up in the up position it doesn't have a lot of tension but and its whole purpose is to keep it up off of the uh, actuator arm the arm that actually turns the potentiometer so what we want to do we have a micro switch here and this micro switch is mounted on the actuator arm so what we want is the top cover to move independent of this arm and so when you compress it it activates the switch turns on your TIG gets the arc started, the high frequency, but you don't move any actual amperage. You had just have the starting amperage or whatever you've set that on your uh, welder for your starting. At that point, then you activate, you know, the higher amperages. So that's pretty much how the uh, micro switch is mounted and how it works. Uh, you can see that I've built uh, bearing housings. So basically I just took a 3 8 uh, ball bearing and I took a piece of stainless and I cut out the shape for the backing and then I just had some uh, stainless pipe that was the exact right diameter for um, the bearing. So I pressed in the bearings, welded, basically sliced off a piece of the stainless pipe, welded it to my backing plate, drilled and tapped the housing so that um, I have nice thin flush uh, bearing housings that fit on the inside. That way my shoulder bolt can go through, ride on the bearings, 
and uh, not touch the housing on the outside and have any drag or uh, resistance. And I did the same thing basically with the uh, potentiometer housing. I have the one that the uh, potentiometer, see if I can get a good angle here, but I made a quarter inch uh, bearing housing. Same thing, I made it out of a piece of aluminum tubing that just fit the bearing, uh, my quarter inch internal diameter bearing that matches the, the shaft of the potentiometer. And then I just welded it to a piece of aluminum angle and then drilled and tapped the housing. You can see the geared belt right here where it goes across the geared pulley. As you activate the arm, you can see that the uh, the geared belt runs the potentiometer. I also have a tension spring that pulls the belt backwards that is a return spring so that when you press it, it pulls the belt back. Okay, so here's a closer view of the uh, geared pulley or the, actually it's just a gear that is uh, tightened up on the shaft of the potentiometer and you can see the geared belt uh, that actuates it or moves it as the arm goes up and down. You can also see the clamps that I made for each end of the belt. Basically I took a clamp that is commercially available for connecting two belts together and I cut off half of it and uh, made another plate to go underneath it. I'll show a closer up view of that later as well. Here's just a different view of it working uh, from the back. You can see the actuator arm has a pressed in bearing and that's the large spring uh, that works it on the side. You can also see from this view how the uh, geared belt, cogged belt, comes down onto the gear that's mounted on the potentiometer and rotates it. You can see uh, that I mounted the uh, micro switch onto the side of the actuator bar. You can also see the plate. Uh, it's just eighth inch angle I use as well that I inset into the end of the bar. Two screws on top and one on the front to hold it in place. And here's a view of the uh, micro switch activating. You can see that as it uh, lets off, the switch activates just uh, to start the welder and then begins to push down on the bar that actuates the potentiometer to start your amperage flow. Okay, so here I am tacking up the plates before I'm about to weld them together onto the bottom and the top covers for the TIG pedal. I got everything tacked together and then I went around and uh, welded them all up and through the magic of time travel, here we are. I got all my plates welded on and now I'm ready to clean everything up. All right, so I wanted to go over a few of the components here uh, that I haven't really done a close up on. Uh, this is the actuator bar. This is uh, what the belt is hooked to that moves the potentiometer. Um, this I made out of a piece of 5 16 uh, 6061 aluminum that I had. And what I did is you can see I pressed in a bronze bearing, quarter inch. And that is the pivot point uh, for the bar. Uh, one of the things I did was uh, I tried to get it set up so that it was exact as far as the travel stops. But after some trial and error, I ended up just putting a um, set screw, a stainless set screw in the back end here. And what that did is allow me to adjust the uh, over travel and the stop so that uh, when it's sitting in its resting position, I can then uh, adjust for the travel of the belt. Because when this belt is on the 
potentiometer, uh, it it has to have a very precise travel because I want I want all the travel out of the potentiometer, but I don't want to over travel it so that I don't you know put stress on it on the end stops. So that's why I made the adjustable uh, set screw on the back end so I could uh, take care of that. Uh, this bar that I screwed onto the front, this is basically just the offset to put it over center of the uh, potentiometer brackets so that when the uh, belt comes down, it comes down directly in line with the pulley, uh, the geared pulley on the uh, or sprocket, you could call it, uh, on the potentiometer, the geared sprocket, because it's not, not actually a pulley. It doesn't uh, it doesn't spin on the shaft. Uh, I wanted to show you a close up here of the clamps that I did for the belt. This um, you can see. Basically, I took just one of the uh, connectors for 3D printer belts. And I cut off a piece of it because it did have the correct um, spline. You can see that it matches up with the geared teeth of the belt. And this allows me to make sure that it stays, uh, stays put on the clamp. The bottom piece is just a little piece of aluminum that I uh, put two screws in. And I just drilled and tapped the clamp so that it would hold the belt. I then put a hole in the back of the clamp so that my spring can uh, pull it for return travel back to its resting position. The clamp on the bar, you can see, goes through the center of it. It's basically the same thing except this one I can loosen up and I can adjust the belt uh, up and down so that I can take slack out and adjust the belt for travel. And you can see that I do have some extra belt that I left there. That way I can pull uh, on the belt. You can get a little bit better look at the bearing housings here. It's just a stainless plate that I TIG welded to the face of it. Uh, and this is just a... Uh, quarter inch quarter 20 screw that had a big shoulder I had it in my uh, in my bin and that just allows the uh, return spring for the top cover and all this spring does is keep the top cover off of uh, the actuator switch there that uh, starts the the welder I just basically put it down to the side drilled a hole through it bent it 90 degrees and that's what holds the uh, the position and the tension on it. You can see there. Uh, the back housing brackets here for the actuator arm are just uh, some angle plate aluminum, eighth inch. Nothing special there. It's just drilled and tapped on one side and clearance for the shoulder, uh, the quarter inch shoulder bolt on the other side. The other thing I did want to show here is the, I'll zoom out so you can see, is the bars that I put on the inside of the top cover of the foot pedal. Basically what this does is allow the shoulder bolts to come through for the pivot and these are threaded on the inside. Both of these are, are threaded. So when the shoulder bolt, the 3-8 shoulder bolt comes through, it threads into this, bottoms out, and it's basically floating just on the bearing on both sides. This gives it something to ride on so that it doesn't bind uh, side to side, and it gives it a, uh, a nice clean pivot that is smooth, that uh, doesn't have to... Uh, doesn't have a chance to bind on anything, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to build a better pedal was because uh, I wanted no friction. I wanted it to have at least the uh, the smoothest possible movement as I could get. I also got the, uh, as you can see, I've got the end plates welded on. Uh, I got them all cleaned up now. 
got the welds all uh, cleaned, ground down and polished. Uh, and you can see that the those inner bars are mounted with uh, flush machine screws into the top cover. This top cover is going to have a uh, grip tape that I'm going to mount on here that's going to be the non-slip part of the top cover. That way your foot doesn't slip off the pedal because this is uh, just straight aluminum like this would be, uh, would be pretty slippery, uh, especially with just work boots on. Anyway, that's, uh, that's where we're at right now. And uh, as I get further along here and get it all together and tested, I'm going to show you uh, how it works. I'm probably going to put my logo on the side here because uh, I'm also an engraver. So I'm going to uh, make it a little bit fancier before, uh, before I'm completely finished. And I'll show that when I get it all finished, assembled, and put together. Okay, here you can see the back end where I've uh, made a clearance cut for wire protection. Uh, this is a stainless uh, gland nut, they call it, or gland unit for uh, protecting your cable so it doesn't pull out. Uh, I got this off of Amazon, and I'll put a link to that as well. Okay, I've uh, got it chucked up on my engraving bench now, and I'm going to cut out the lettering for the side and lay it all out. And you can see that right now I'm cutting out the letters with my rotary tool. I've already cut out the outline of the letters, now I'm just cutting them deeper so that I can blacken them uh, with some uh, black paint once I get it cut out. Uh, this is just a uh, little compilation of me doing the letters and then I'll lay out the scroll work for the ends and a little bit on the top and the bottom. So here I'm just drawing out the engraving and now I've got my engraver and I'm, uh, this is sped up obviously. I can't go this fast. I wish I could, but anyway, this is cut uh, by hand. Each scroll is spun in a circle with my feet and the bench itself. It's kind of like a potter's wheel. Uh, it makes it easier so I can just use my hands for the engraving and I don't have to worry about turning uh, with anything except my feet. Uh, I cut some scrolls on the ends and some on the center, top and bottom, just to make it a little bit fancier. That's all. All right, so once I got the engraving finished, I filled it in with uh, some flat black paint. And this is what it looks like. Here's the Pronatech for logo for my channel. And here's the other side. I call it the Tigmaster XD for extreme duty. I think it came out nice. Uh, let me show you how it works in action. All right, so here I am using the new pedal. Uh, I've got it hooked up to my Yes Welder 250 amp TIG but I also have it wired so I can use it on my AHP 201XD. Uh, I have an adapter that I made for the Yes Welder. And I just wanted to show you that the pedal does work. Uh, I've been welding with it for a little while. I love this pedal. It's so smooth. If you could try this out, you would uh, see just how smooth the bearings are and, and very precise it is. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing pedal. I've been very, very pleased with how it came out. Uh, you can see here, here's my Yes Welder 250 amp TIG. And uh, here in just a second, I'm going to bring up a screenshot from SSC Controls. If you go to sscontrols.com, you can pull up their section on TIG pedals and scroll down the page, find which uh, pedal uh, or which welder you have. Click over to the right you'll see a section that says info sheet. Click on that and you'll bring this up. This is actually the sheet for my uh, AHP 201XD. It's a seven pin plug and you can see that there's still only five wires being used but they do a jumper. They solder between six and seven and all that does is tell the welder that a pedal is hooked up to it. Basically, all you have is five wires, three to the potentiometer and two to the switch that activates uh, the pedal or activates the welder to th uh, begin throwing the high-frequency arc and to begin welding. 
Uh, this is a, a great resource if you're going to build your own pedal. It shows you, you know, the pin diagrams for your welder. Uh, so uh, this really helped me out. It helped me. It also shows you, you know, what, uh, how many ohms your potentiometer is for that welder. Uh, so this is a great resource if you go to ssccontrols.com. You can pull this up and pull down the sheet for your welder and it'll help you uh, do the wiring correctly for your uh, TIG pedal if you decide to build one. All right, guys. So that's it for how to build your own custom TIG pedal. Uh, I hope you liked my video. I hope you liked the project. I thought it was a pretty cool project. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. I hope it inspires you to see how easy this is to build yourself. It's not complex. It does take some precise measurement, but really it's not that hard to build. Um, and I hope you build your own. If you do, go ahead and send me a picture, link it up uh, in the comments section. I'd love to see your project that you build. Um, if you like this project and you like my videos that I've been putting out, go ahead and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so that you get notified when I come out with new projects. I've got a bunch more in the works and so stay tuned and I'll show you uh, a bunch of really cool things you can build yourself. So that's about it. I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.